Okay, folks. Today's topic is information government governance. Um, we look, last week we looked at you know the purpose of organisations and corporations and their responsibilities, and that's the sort of part of the name of the module. And this one is about information governance. And I want to talk again a little bit about the general principles that are really really important, and how to find out what you're supposed to do in terms of information governance and information security. So I'll just give you a little bit of an introduction and then it's back to normal in terms of researching, researching and finding sources, finding lots and lots of questions. Again, this is all about what are the fundamental questions that are critical in achieving a high grade, high quality information governance in all organisations. And I'll be introducing you to a particular framework which can apply to from the smallest organisation, a, a sort of single person consultancy, through to the largest organisations in the world. So what are we going to try and do? We want to look at what are the broad principles, and we're going to look at what I consider to be one of the best frameworks of questions there is about information governance and information security. It's called ISO 27002. It's part of a series of ISO standards, international standards, which started off ooh, in the back end of the 1990s as a British standard. British standard 7799, parts 1, 2 and 3. And they've now been extended to, or converted into an international standard, um, the 27000 series. And there are something like 10 or 15 subsections now. And they, although ISO have called it the International Standard for Information Security. When I talked to some people from the British Standards Organisation who push, who are involved with ISO 27000 series, they were very, very clear that yes, it is about security, but it's also about information governance. And they would have much preferred the standards to have been called information governance than information security because what they what you see in the ISO 27002 is our, our 10 chapters uh, full of really interesting questions about different sorts of security and governance that are necessary from looking after computer records, paper records, the impact of having subcontractors coming into your organization and 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 and. And there's one chapter as I say about people about subcontractors, and it's kind of interesting to think what might have happened um, <coughs> to many, many of the hacks and extractions of people's information that have happened over the last te 5, 10, 15 years if some of these um, questions had been really properly thought about and put into practice as they let people into their uh, systems as subcontractors with infected pen drives, etc. So there's lots of really interesting stuff from 27002. There are many others. 27001 is a standard um, of this is what you need to do and we can certify you against it because here are the policies, the procedures, the, all the tick boxes you've got to show you can actually tick and then once you've done that we can say you are ISO 27000 um, certified and that allows you to then um, get contracts of various sorts, but it's very much a very heavyweight procedure, very much like actually the American COVID, which again is you've got to do all this and you can do it almost without thinking. And the point that governance is about is you've got to think, you've got to actually ask yourself, what are my critical risks? And as I say, standard uh, 27,000, I think it's five which is how you do risk assessment and risk management and risk mitigation that fits in front of 27002. And one of the things you want to look at when you get your copy of 27002, and I'll tell you about that in a minute, you look in the introduction section. Section 0. Point, and I can't remember if it's 0. 0.2 or 0. 0.3 these days, they kind of move things around a little bit. But what it points out is there are three fundamental pillars to good information governance. One is risk assessment for your organization in its current situation. The second one 
is to think about all of those laws and regulations and everything else around you, all those external requirements which you should be obeying. And then the third pillar is compliance with all of those external and with the internal processes and procedures and policies <coughs> and so on. So risk assessment, compliance with external requirements, compliance with, ex sorry, compliance with, let's start again, from the top. Risk assessment, compliance with external requirements, and then compliance with internal. If you, don't, if you fail to carry out one of those three, the whole thing falls apart but they lead you to some important and invaluable questions. Now, one of the crucial sets of principles about information governance and information security are the three uh, words for CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. In other words, you keep secret the things that ought to be kept secret, things like personal details, and we see today that the government in the UK is reinforcing the message that if you publish private people's information on the internet, you can be taken to, uh, to court now, as of so roughly today. But that, so that's just as an ordinary private individual, and you start putting out on the internet, email, uh, in blogs and what have you, details that are private to an individual. Names, addresses, dates of birth, you know, those sort of things that hackers can use to take over your identity. Or if you're a big or an organization from any size upwards, no, you've got to keep your clients' details private. You've got to protect them from hackers. Integrity. Making sure that your data actually is what it should be. And in the world we're in nowadays, and this is your assignment, is in the world of uncertain veracity, how do we, is it feasible even, to maintain total integrity of the data you actually hold in your master databases? In a time when five years after you implement a clean set of data for your ERP systems, as an example, why is it that five years later you need to run major data cleanup exercises? How can you, if you have big data of this uncertain veracity, 80% of uncertain uh, veracity data, how can we be certain that our analyses, our records, are accurate enough to be able to make sensible and just and fair judgments? How do we, if we are a financial services organization, assessing the credit worthiness of our potential clients or our actual clients, how do we make sure that we have really good quality data? The integrity problem. And the third one, which is a problem for the uh, chief information officer and the IT teams, is that it's available when it's needed. What level of uptime do we need to have with our systems? Is 99% uh, availability adequate, guys? Work it out. 99% availability means it's what one hour in every hundred hours, that's every five less than five days, we have no access for one hour if it's 24-7 or our clients. So that's clearly not acceptable. One hour offline for Amazon is worth hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars of business. If you're a small company, with only a few hundred or a few thousand clients or customers, remember, if your, your website is down and because of the way that life is, that one hour is bound to be in the middle of the day. It will not be at three o'clock at night when the system goes down. It will be two o'clock in the afternoon or whenever your most busy time is. That's just the way the world seems to work. It's just contrary. And every customer who comes to you in those, that hour, every five days, is going to go away. They won't bother to come back to you ever again, probably. So availability, again, is really important, part of the governance. So in terms of 99%, forget it. You're looking at 99.239 about two <coughs> or three nines availability is what you're, you're contracting, or should be contracting for. So, 
The first challenge you have today for the seminar is some serious levels of research. <clears throat> you need to find a whole lot of sources which you can put into your working bibliography in Harvard Standard, remember, that will tell you more about those three principles, the CIA principles, just to set the framework, the scenery about what it is that information governance is all about. That confidentiality, that integrity, the availability. So first, a couple of little hints. Search for some words like information governance principles, maybe as a whole fr uh, phrase. And the second one is, you are not likely to find too much through Google Scholar. You will find some, and there's some fantastic authors out there um, who will help you get you a good <coughs> idea on some of these. Bruce Schneier is a good one in terms of security. Looking at that sort of confidentiality side, why is it we keep failing with all of our security issues? What is it about human behavior? Our fundamental behavior that causes us to ignore most of what we know is good practice for security. <coughs> right, how many of you on your wireless router at home have a password that is 32 characters long? Anybody? No. We just happen to know that unless you've got a password, and I fail this one as well, if you happen to have a password that is less than 32 characters long, it can be what is called rainbow cracked in about five or 10 minutes for 50 pence. If you happen to be driving by and you pick up the chatter with um, a wireless network uh, router, you will get some details and that will, you can then crack it, as I say, for 50p in about five minutes or 10 minutes online. Because people have created these things called rainbow tables from you know, one or sort of passwords of five characters long for every single character combination in that length, right up to 31 bits characters. And that's how they can crack your passwords in almost no time at all. We know about that, but we still don't do it. So hence, industry and business type sources are most likely going to be the, your best ones. So the professional organizations who have their websites about these sort of things. That's the first thing. So find as many sources as possible. Then as you're doing that, which business sectors, you know, things like education, like aerospace, like health, like manufacturing, like retail, which business sectors are providing you with the best and the most guidance about good quality information governance principles? And then think too about the question of how do these sources that you've acquired, 5, 10, 15 of them, how do they contribute to your understanding of all of these principles for good information governance? So that's the first phase. Then the next stage of your analysis is to think about those, um, the, what you've learned in the, that research and think, okay, how does all this relate to your understanding of the principles in ISO 27002? And then moving on, think about, okay, here's the, all the chapters in ISO 27002. Which of those chapters are most relevant supporting those three CIA principles, confidentiality, integrity, and availability? Then move on to ISO 27, uh, 20,000 itself, another standard which is quite interesting. You'll have to find it and learn about what it does, what it's talking about. Look at the introduction, look at the preface, find sources that refer to what 20, uh, ISO 20,000 is all about. And then ask yourselves a couple of important questions. Which bits of 20,000 relate to information governance principles? And in what way does 20,000 enhance 27,002? So you're looking at a, a, a set across all of the ISO, 20, uh, ISO standards 
which actually interact. Some of them will help you to understand how to do better than just the basics. So this is why I've introduced 20,000, to help you understand another way of looking at information governance that goes primarily driven by 27,002. So that's what you need to be doing over the next hour and a half or so. And that will then lead into this afternoon, sorry, your <coughs> Thursday session, and I'll introduce that one as well. Because this is your target, is because in, on Thursday you start pulling all of this stuff together about information governance into your assignment. So between now and Thursday you'll be sort of thinking about all of this stuff and developing towards these couple of objectives. And as you do this, here's a reminder back to Introduction to Computer Science as well when you were learning how to make notes. And this is a reminder for anyone who's joined us this year from elsewhere. Find out about how to make notes. Go to the uh, library section and the skills uh, mod modules there and read the section on how to make notes effectively. Go and research elsewhere because this is going to be important to you, both this module and your parallel module and also for your dissertation because you're going to be doing a lot of literature research over the next well, the rest of this term, basically. And to remember how you go about making notes with about all of these sources you found and how the bright ideas hit you at different times of the day, not just when you're studying, but you know, when you're in a driving, you're in a bus, or you're in the shower, in the bath, whatever, you have ideas. This will help you to remind yourself about how to make notes. So that's a little sort of uh, idea that's going to be important to you. The skills page covers it. You might want to use Mind Genius, or maybe by now you've actually worked out how to structure your ideas, how to make your notes. A little refresher, folks, just in case. So that's just a refresher on that one, and then we get into pulling things together on Thursday. All the stuff you do today, now what do you do with it on Thursday? Reminding yourself you've got 20,000, you've got 27,002, lots of definitions. You've got last week and the week before the failures, going back to last year as well with ITSM, where you've got a lot of ideas about failures and success in projects. Pull these ideas together. And what are overall all the work you've done in the last couple of weeks? What are the fundamental questions and lessons that you need to incorporate into your ideas as you develop towards that last section of the assignment? Which is to come up with a clear, focused, significant strategy for information governance for all of this big data of uncertain veracity. That's what your focus is on this week, coming up with this lot. Okay, does that set the scene nicely for you? Quite a lot of work, folks. But then, that's the nature of the beast, folks. Otherwise, I've introduced you what you're going to do today and on Thursday, and then we'll see how it all goes. Okay, folks, get to it. There's a lot of work to be done. <laughs>